Hi, my name is Dr. Paul Morrissey, President of Campion College, and welcome to the second episode of Theology Thursdays. Today, being still in the octave of Easter, we're going to be looking at the resurrection. The first thing I want to do is, you know, look at what, what do we mean by the resurrection? And the second thing we'll look at are the qualities of a resurrected body. So what is the resurrection? Well, the first thing we can say is that the resurrection is not simply a resuscitation of the dead body of Jesus. Lazarus was resuscitated by Jesus. He was dead, his body was decaying over a few days, and Jesus miraculously brought that body back to life. But Lazarus is not with us still. He did die again. Jesus' resurrection is not a resuscitation. His human body, which died on the cross and was laid in a tomb and was beginning to decay, was resurrected, risen in glory to never die again, fully alive to never die again. And so I want to look at well, what does this mean? And St Thomas Aquinas, the great medieval uh, theologian, looked at the resurrected body and he, and by using the Gospels and looking at the Gospel accounts of the resurrection, he identified four qualities of a resurrected body. And here, again, we need to be clear. So that when we talk about Jesus' resurrection, we're talking about his human nature, his soul, being reunited with his human body, and then that human body with his soul rising in glory. That's what we're talking about. So, Jesus' human nature is just like ours, just like your human nature and my human nature, a human body and a human soul. So, we believe as Christians that our own bodies will be resurrected on the last days. Our souls, yes, are in immortal, and when we die, our bodies and souls are separated. It's a great tragedy of death because our body is truly part of who I am as a person. But on the last day, we believe, like Jesus himself, we will be resurrected, body and soul. So what does that mean? Well, as I said, St Thomas identified four basic characteristics of the resurrected body. And I find these fascinating. Fascinating because, my goodness, I'm looking forward to having a resurrected body. They are tremendously cool things. So the first thing is, he identifies, is that the resurrected body is impassable. Now this word does sound a bit archaic, but impassable simply means an inability to suffer or undergo change. So in the Gospels themselves, we see that Christ's human uh, resurrected body is impassable. And it also means that his soul, if you like, his human soul, actually governs his body now. So that, that means that the intellect and will is in control, if you like, comes first before the body. At the moment, how we experience human life is that our bodies really experience reality first and that impacts our soul. And we, we experience this disintegration between our bodies and souls. But in the resurrected body, God will directly inform our souls and our souls will directly inform our bodies. So that means that we will be completely integrated. Our emotional life, our, um, uh, the way we experience reality will be completely um, integrated to our intellects and wills and they will be directly integrated with God. At the moment, it's a bit the other way around for us. And that's why we, we suffer a lot, don't we, in this world. We suffer emotionally. We suffer physically and so on. But the resurrected body, there'll be no physical or emotional suffering or lack that we experience today. The second characteristic of the glorified or resurrected body that St Thomas says is the, the fact that the, the, the resurrected body is subtle. And that's a lovely word to be subtle. But in this context, what he's talking about is what we see in the Gospels with Christ's resurrected body, that he's able to move through walls. 
It's not that he's sort of some magician and changes spots, but he moves through the wall because the door was locked to greet his uh, disciples. So St. Thomas talks about this in terms of our, uh, again, our souls, in a sense, being first rather than our bodies. And that the glorified body, although it does occupy space, it does so in a way that makes it subtle with other bodies. I'm not sure if St. Thomas talks about this, but anyway, I shall. Um, this means that when we're in heaven, hopefully we're in heaven, and there are a lot of people in heaven, that's what we hope, um, it's not it, it's not going to be crowded because our bodies are subtle. So we're not going to be thinking, oh, gee, there's too many people in here. Our bodies are subtle, and therefore it won't, it won't cause any effect in terms of feeling crowded. And also mean if there are any walls there, we can just move straight through them. The third quality of the resurrected body, according to St. Thomas, is agility, that our bodies will be agile. And what does he mean by this? Well, again, looking at the Gospels, Jesus seems very agile in his resurrected state, namely that he seems to be able to move to different places very quickly, um, seemingly two places at once, although it's, it's difficult to clarify time exactly in the Gospels. And what St. Thomas says here is that in our glorified bodies, our soul will be related to the body as its first mover. And what this means is basically contrary to how we experience things at the moment, whereby our body really is the first mover. Think about, you know, when you're tired, um, your body will be tired and therefore um, your soul, if you like, your mind, even though it want, may want to do something, your body will say, no, no, let's just sit down and rest. The agile glorified body will operate in terms of the soul moving the body first. And this means, as St. Thomas says, we can be in two places at once. So our mind can say, okay, I'm on a beach in Hawaii because it's a nice day, for example, and also here at work where I have to do something. So agility means to be able to do two things at once. And again, if you think of heaven, you know, sometimes we may think, oh, heaven's, you know, it's, uh, it's going to be pretty dull. You know, we're just going to be sit there praising God for eternity. But in fact, with these glorified bodies, we can be doing all sorts of things really at the same time uh, because of this agility, um, which is you know, a really wonderful thing. And the final characteristic of the glorified body, according to St. Thomas, is claritas or clarity. And this is the shining quality of the resurrected body. And again, we get a hint of that, don't we, in the, in the Gospels where you know, Mary Magdalene or the disciples on the way to Emmaus, you know, they don't recognise Jesus at first. Why is this? Well, St Thomas says that with the glorified body, we actually see the soul first. We see, in a sense, the, the virtues of the soul before we see the body, meaning it, it, it really is you know, in a glorified state. Um, again, how do we explain this? Well, perhaps, you know, to think about, um, you know, sometimes when we think someone's really holy or wise, it will actually transform their bodies or their face. And their face, even though it, they may not necessarily be a, a beautiful face, like in proportion or whatever, there's a certain shining quality to their face because of the holiness. And that was often said of, say, someone like Mother Teresa, that, you know, even though she was old and, you know, in the ways of the world, her face wasn't necessarily beautiful, but her, her virtues shone. You know, we saw her virtue before we saw the, the wrinkles of her face. And that's what it's like with the glorified body, says St. Thomas. So, as I said before, you know, the resurrected body is an incredible thing to believe in. Uh, we get a foretaste of it, obviously, in terms of look, reading the Gospels and Jesus himself. But we also, um, you know, believe that as Christians on the last day, we ourselves will be resurrected. You know, Christ has saved us. That's what we've celebrated in these days. He's truly saved us from sin. He's reunited us to the Father. He's, um, and he's given us this promise that we can be with him for eternity, resurrected. On the last day, we, we really believe that our bodies will be resurrected in glory that they'll be impassable, that they'll be subtle, they'll be agile, and they'll be beautiful. Now, um, 
If you've got any comments, any feedback, any questions, please you know, put those in below um, in the comment section. Um, if you want to find out more about Campion College, you know, we offer Australia's premier liberal arts degree here at the college. You want to find out more about our, our degrees, our courses, please go online and see our website. Um, and I really look forward to seeing you next time um, for Theology Thursdays. So this is the idea of agility, that we can also be in two places at once, particularly when the phone rings. <laughs> I can answer the phone and record this video, which is perfect. Someone's probably coming. Now the second quality that St Thomas talks about of the resurrected body is, um, is, I'll pause because I forgot. Can you just check it? Yeah. <laughs> I need to check it. Possibility, subtlety is the next one. These things are once, wow, that's great. Clarity, yep, okay, should be fine. Subtlety. So I'll just say the second, according to St Thomas. Yeah, okay.